Hello, ladies and gents, I am back with another video. Um, don't know why I just did that. Anyway, uh, apologies for the lack of content that I've been posting recently. And I've just been absolutely crazy busy over the past few months doing sort of 360 tours and property photography and commercial sort of interiors and stuff. Uh, all around the country, so it's been uh, it's been a busy, busy, busy time for me. So I haven't really had much time to uh, to make any YouTube videos at all. But um, the reason why I'm making one now is because over the past few months I've been using a particular piece of equipment pretty much every single day, um, and I wanted to go into a bit more of a sort of a deep dive into sort of you know how it works and the benefits of using it. Um, that is the Nodal Ninja Six panoramic tripod head and um, you know I've had a few different Nodal Ninja products over the past few years I personally wouldn't use anything else I have had a lot of questions recently from people asking me you know what what equipment I use uh, what's the best panoramic head to get for different cameras and so on and so forth I always recommend Nodal Ninja some people come back saying it's too expensive um, my response to that is you get what you pay for by all means, if you wanted to buy a cheap panoramic head to start off with, do that. That's exactly what I did. Uh, but I did find that I had some problems with them. A couple of them broke on me, um, whereas the Nodal Ninja stuff just w will not break. Uh, it's, it's built like a tank. So, um, so yeah, my recommendation is if you can afford it, definitely, definitely consider it. Um, now, the Nodal Ninja 6 panoramic heads, which we'll get out to have a look at in a minute, are sort of more designed towards the sort of the, the larger mirrorless camera uh, DSLR sort of shooters. If you're using like a micro four, four thirds camera or something smaller like that, then you could get away with the Nodal Ninja 3, which is an absolutely fantastic head as well. Um, I'll probably be doing a separate video on that one, uh, just so we can sort of separate the two out. But for this one, I wanted to focus on the, the 6, okay? so. To start off with, what I've got on here is I've got the um, the Nodal Ninja uh, Easy Leveling Base, uh, which is a great little piece of kit. Uh, what it does is you basically just rotate these little these little knobs here just to make sure that everything's level. Uh, it's very very accurate. So um, the benefit of that is that I always say to people, if you can get it right in camera, do so. Uh, there's no point in sort of you know having an unlevel panorama and then having to level it later on you may come across problems even when you're trying to level it uh, and then you know you're, you're just going to be wasting time so if you can get it right in camera get your get your panoramic head level and um, then you'll be good to go okay so uh, the first little bit that comes with the Nodal Ninja 6 uh, is the the lower rail which is this bit here okay um, they do come with sort of little carrying pouches and everything to to uh, pop them in just to make sure they stay in tip-top condition because it's you know they're not cheap so it's uh, definitely worth looking after them um, so the way you just literally just screw this on to the uh, leveling base here like so there we go okay and that fits on nice and tightly now um, around the bottom here uh, you've basically got a number of different screws now this one here is basically your tightening screw. So if you tighten this one up completely, um, then you won't be able to rotate this at all. So what I generally do is just loosen it very, very slightly. And then that just loosens it up for me. Um, you can hear some clicks. So it's very, very nice and solid. Um, and the more you loosen it up, the sort of the more you'll, I don't know if you can hear that. You can more, the more you can sort of hear the clicks on there. Uh, and then also these other screws on here, basically gives you the ability to to change uh, the number of degrees that the head will turn in okay so you've got a 90 setting you've got 60 36 15 10 uh, all sorts of different ones so if you're shooting uh, four shots going around if you've got an eight millimeter fisheye on a, uh, a full frame camera for example you you choose the 90 setting i do six shots around so i use a 12 millimeter um, so that's uh, 60 degrees per shot Okay, um, so yeah, I basically have that in there. And if I just loosen that up again a little bit, what we will do then is we will get to the second part, which is the upper rail. Okay, that's this bit here. Okay, not sure that's it, if I can't focus. 
focus. I'm having to use my DJI camera for this because I'm obviously going to be putting my main camera on here in a minute. Um, so apologies if, apologies if we have any, uh, any focus problems, um, but ignore this bit here. This is basically a, um, a NFC tag that I've got for all my contact details and stuff. So when I'm out and about, um, people can just tap their phone on here and uh, get my details. It's a biochemical vice, by the way, which is really cool. So look into that. Um, so this section here basically goes onto the rail very easily, just clicks in like so, and then you screw it in, and there we go, it's on there, okay. Um, just move these out of the way. Okay, so can we see all that? Yeah, we can, good stuff. Right, so if we just untighten this screw here, this gives you free movement of this arm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just put that to naught degrees, and there are uh, sort of degree points on the head itself, which you'll be able to see. And um, the other great thing is you've got these stoppers here as well. One here and one oh, here, okay. Now, what they are for is basically when you've found your no parallax point, what you can do is you can put the stopper here to basically mark where your no parallax point is for your lens. So. Uh, what you do when you set it up, you just literally slide it till it hits that stopper, tighten it up, and then the same with your camera. So if I get my camera and pop it on here, there we go, screw that in slightly, slide it forward, bang, let's hit that stopper, and the camera is now securely on there. Okay, um, now the, the Great thing with this head as well is that it's got a little sort of clicky setting here, which is very, very, very clever because what at the moment, if I move this here, you probably won't be able to hear it, but it's completely smooth, okay? Um, that's the way I generally like to use it when I'm doing my, my shots because all of my shots going round are always just at one angle. So I keep it at naught degrees going round uh, and then I'll just flip it right up to 90 degrees pointing up to shoot, shoot the zenith and then 90 degrees looking down to do the nadir shot. Okay, um, however, there is a little switch just here, okay, just at the top. Um, and if you flick that, you just click it, what it will do then is it will basically click every seven and a half degrees. Okay, so if I just move this round slightly, you'll be able to see here, if I just click, 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 click. Now, once you've got that, you can just lock it in like so. Now, the, the great benefit of this, um, and I spoke to someone the other day, a friend of mine who does uh, multi-row um, panoramas. So very, very, very high resolution panorama shots. Um, and he has got one of these heads and he said this is by far the most incredible feature of this and it's the only one he's actually seen it on. Um, so he, what he'll basically do is he'll have it, have it set at zero um, and then if he wants to do another row 30 degrees pointing up, he'll just do click, 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 click and he's at 30 degrees, okay? And he knows that's 30 degrees then, okay? And then he'll shoot his row going like so and then He'll do the opposite, so looking down, so do his clicks. Click, 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 there we go, we're at 30 degrees, looking down that way, okay? And then you basically just return it back to the, uh, back to the zero point. So um, I'm just gonna set this back, like so. Very, very, very easy to do, uh, but an incredibly useful feature to have um, on, on this head. And, and, it's, and it's features like that that you're, you know, you're paying, you're paying your money for. Okay, so there is also a Nadir adapter built into the tripod head itself. Uh, and the way that works is you basically just unscrew this, the screw on the bottom rail here. And then you can, you know, when, you've, when you want to shoot your Nadir shot, you basically just slide the rail all the way to the end. And then 
if I have this up, that would help. <laughs> like so. There we go, just as if we're gonna shoot on a deer shot. And then you, all you need to do is just twist, okay? So you see here, just twist just from here. So you twist your camera around, like so. Lock it back in, and then you can shoot down if you're on a deer shot. What you do need to do with this um, is you need to sort of recompose your tripod uh, a little bit. So what I generally tend to do is basically just have a, it doesn't need to be that accurate um, because the PT Geary software that I use is normally very, very good at sort of, um, you know, blending it all in. So what I generally tend to do is just move my tripod legs out of the way just by rotating the column like this, okay? Then the tripod legs will move out of the way and then you basically just where the center of the tripod is, you just move the camera back. So it's over, generally over that point, um, and then you'd take your shot like so, okay? The other thing that we've got is the bubble level on the top. So if I just make sure this is all screwed in, okay? So you can see on the top there, We've got a bubble level on the top of the head. Now, I've used lots and lots of different you know, panoramic heads and things like that, and some bubble levels are good. Some are absolutely shockingly un, you know, inaccurate. Uh, this one is fantastic. So, you know, if you use it in conjunction with this panoramic, um, sorry, the leveling base, so you're basically just twisting, you, you might be able to see it moving. Here, so I'm just twisting it. Um, you can just basically just wait until the bubble level is in the center, like so. And there we go. We are now perfectly level, okay? So the other things that you've got, uh, or the other features that you've got with this head is you've got these degree markings uh, around the base of the head itself so you can see exactly you know, where you're shooting. Um, sort of if, if you are doing, again, it comes down to multi-rows. Uh, if you you know if you are shooting very very accurately, it's very very important to keep the you know keep the uh, rotation exactly the same as you're going through through your shot. Uh, that's whether you're doing 360 or uh, sort of just normal panoramic uh, sort of gigapixel photography. So yeah, that's very very handy to have there. And then obviously you've got the uh, the degree markings on this upper part as well. Um, I mean the key the key thing I wanted to sort of the message I wanted to get across with this really is just how well built this thing is. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to use. In fact, my workflow has sped up te fivefold, tenfold um, by using this. Okay, because once you've, you know, if you're if you're trying to work when you're working three hundred and sixty photography, you need to work accurately. That's what it's all about. You have to be accurate, um, but at the same time, we don't want to be spending you know, tons and tons of time making sure that everything's working and nothing's going to sag and all that sort of stuff. But because this thing is made so well, I have the peace of mind that when I'm adjusting this, that I can do this if I'm, you know, doing my level, level shot for the first time. And then I'll just lock it in like that. And that is not going anywhere. It's not going to move a millimeter. Okay. That means that when I'm rotating the camera around to do my shots like so, um, I know that this is going to be 100% level across the whole of the, of the 360 image. Um, and the benefit I get from that is that when I come to throw my images into PT GUI, um, obviously this, this has a lot to do with your no parallax point as well. Uh, there are lots and lots of videos on YouTube um, to show you how to find your no parallax point. Uh, I've also done a training course on 360 photography to show you sort of how to do it literally from beginning to end. So if you're a, a, you know, new to this, it might be worth checking that out. Or even if you're, you know, ju you just got into it, but you want a few questions answered, um, you know, that that might be included in the video. So I'll pop a link to that in the description below. But the important thing is, is that when you come to stitch your images, as long as you've got your no parallax point set accurately uh, and that is a bit of trial and error um, but once you've got that set accurately the next part of an accurate stitch when you're using something like PT GUI is 
you know, how accurate the degrees are that you've taken the, the shots going round in, how level the panoramic head is, so on and so forth. Now I've, as I say before, I, ha I, I know outright that this is gonna be 100% perfect on every single shot that I do. Uh, so when I come to bring the images into PC GUI, they, I generally get a perfect stitch every single time, 98% of the time I get a perfect stitch. If I don't, it probably means that I've been stupid and kicked the tripod or something like that. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I'm, you know, I just wanted to, to express how important it is to, if you can financially, um, go for something like this. Uh, you know, I've I've recommended a few people have messaged me recently, and I've said, look, save up a little bit of money. Uh, it won't take you long, and um, you know, once you once you've you've started doing a few jobs, a couple of jobs will 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 pay it off for you. Okay, so uh, so yeah, um, I hope that's been useful. Uh, please do leave uh, any comments or feedback in the uh, boxes below. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't haven't subscribed yet. And I am now going to do some more editing. <laughs> uh, great to speak to you guys and I will see you again soon. Take care.